Ooh, laundry by hand. Okay. Hi guys. It's Marianne. Hopefully you still remember me. Uh -oh. And I'm sorry for all of this non-uploading I've been doing. It's just, it's been a bit of a mess. But I want to talk to you about what happened on September 20th. Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico. Category 5 hurricane. And I live here. I was here. And I wanted to talk a little bit about it. As you can see, I have electricity now. It's been a, like a four, three, four days that I recently got electricity. So I can film this now. Hurricane Maria was was a day. <laughs> was a few couple of months, honestly. First, what I wanted to say is, you know, you're never going to be repaired. That's the first thing. Um, I was hearing about this hurricane. We were hearing about it and we were getting what we needed, you know, water, food, uh getting like bags ready for you know book bags or something or backpacks or something so we if we need to you know leave in the middle of everything or our house gets destroyed or something we had an emergency backpack ready and stuff we the windows you have to seal them you have to go through all this preparation it's very stressful so the day before hurricane maria hit or a few days before we were preparing for that prepared the house covering windows that are glass etc etc and that was a mission, making sure that animals, the animals are safe, you know, we had the animals all in the house, so I have a cat, a dog, a, a rabbit, I have another, well, I used to take care of another cat, but that's an, he's now if, um, in another house, but I had all the animals in the living room, and we, we closed up, and then the day before, the day before, like, the 19th when Hurricane Maria hit, Oh, sorry. The 19th before Hurricane Maria hit. Um, it was just so like a normal day. Like I woke up, I was having internet, I was watching the internet, I was doing whatever I do all the time, and it was just so unreal. Like you know, you're waiting for a hurricane to come and screw you over, and you're just living your life normally. Which of course is what. Hello. I mean, obviously not normally. Work was canceled or schools were canceled. Everything is canceled because you're preparing for the storm, the hurricane. So there's that. And then the wind started around 1 or 2 in the morning and I was already terrified. I'm not going to sit here and be like, Psst, no, I wasn't scared. No, I was scared. Now, I had faith, you know, nothing's going to happen, we're going to be okay, the animals are fine, everyone's going to be fine. So the, during, during the wind starting, and I really, I, I slept kind of through it, but not really, because you know, you just hear this massive wind and then the rain starts and then this hurricane lasted a long time like I think it lasted nearly 24 hours if I'm not mistaken I'll have to google it but it felt like 24 hours completely I was stuck in here like my mom my grandmother and I and we weren't alone we had um other family with us which helped a lot you know trying to pass the time we played dominoes um we talked for a while at a certain point of the day obviously there's no electricity anymore um there's like nothing to do apart from just talk and weigh it out but we talked and um i was with my little cousins that they're like smaller under like their teens and they were like we were talking and i was trying to comfort them more so to comfort myself because i was kind of scared mom was very scared and i you know it's a hurricane obviously you're not going to be whoop -de -doo, it's a hurricane like no one does that but you know you try to stay calm and um, I was looking out the window, uh, not the window because the windows were covered, but I was looking out the window that had like a little bit of protection. I do not recommend you do that because if something flies, you will get effed. Um, and you really, honestly, you couldn't see a lot, just a lot of wind, but you, details and stuff, you didn't really see anything. At one point, I just hear stuff flying around, sin, um, I don't know, trash cans or palm trees or a chair or some, a glass breaking it was very awful it's like what is happening outside like the world is falling and it's just so insane and the wind goes and it's just so insane so my grandmother slept most of it honestly because she, she was here for George so she was low key chill about it during the hurricane I was thinking about my family about my friends how are they how are they dealing I can't I can't text I don't have signal like there's nothing happening so you're you're not you're in commute you can't you don't have signal you can't communicate with anyone you there's no internet or anything but then the hurricane stops and I try to sleep 
Let's throw no signal. And there was no signal for a, a good two weeks, I want to say, after the hurricane. Um, but after that, the hurricane, you know, ended or left or whatever you want to say. And then you open everything when you're, first of all, you're breathing fresh air because, you know, you were in the house for a whole day. And then there's just a slap in the face of your backyard is messed up. There's projectile or whatever you want to call it everywhere, like garbage. The house upstairs that my, I live in, it's a, a two-story house, I guess you would call it. The house upstairs is made out of wood and it received a, not a lot of damage, but a, an okay amount of damage. So that house upstairs doesn't have a door now there's like no like the ceiling is kind of missing whenever and the backyard there was a whole bunch of trees I have clips of that I think I'm gonna insert it There was the, the backyard was full of trees and branches and just clothes or whatever the heck. At this point, I let the animals, you know, because they're literally the backyard, so they're fine, they're chill. Um, and then you prepare to res recover, to restore what what the hurricane messed up. So you know, there's a lot of cleaning involved. Obviously, there's a lot of checking to see if anything is broken. Um, there's just a lot of accepting it like this actually happened and you know thank god you're alive but it's just it's a process and it, you know cleaning and all that stuff i will say it was a, a tough you know branches trees heavy trees you know a lot of garbage a lot of mud because of the rain and it was just a lot of weeks i weeks of cleaning and just waiting for people to pick it up like not pick it up like to the garbage to come by and take it um and then I think right after the hurricane like the day after or the day I'm not sure but it was during that quickly my friends came over to see how we were doing and that touched my heart so much and I'm really lucky to have them and I will say that we bonded a lot we didn't have any signal there's no signal at this point there's no internet there's nothing there's no electricity everyone's in the same boat on this point but they came by to see how we were doing and that touched my heart and I love them and thank you for doing that. They are really special. Um, let's see, what else? The lines to get food, like in the store. First of all, there's no system. Like cashiers, anything like that. There's no bank, there's no anything. So you have to have money, like efectivo. You have to have cash. Um, so the lines were insane. You, the lines just to get ice because you know there's no electricity you need ice to maintain your food was insane I did not partake in any of that um, but my mom used to wake up at 5 in the morning to get ice and she would literally come back around 8 or 9 so that's insane the same thing with gas the, the lines to get gasoline no you know you have to literally wake up to a.m. to get gas and the lines are endless and I would try to find clips of that because I didn't go out to see any of that. But, you know, the lines are fucking crazy. Um, what else? This is the grocery stores. Same thing. First of all, none of them opened after. They open after. They should have, they have to open after, like, the hurricane. But, you know, if they have damage or anything, they can't. So, there's that. Because you obviously have to, you know, have food in your house for at least a couple of days after, you know, when the stores can go to regular scheduling or whatever, regular scheduling or whatever, so, there's that. So there was a lot of repetitive, you know, going to get gas, going to get ice, making sure your rations are, are correct, mm, water. We were lucky we did not um, lose, like, we had water, we, we, no, we, the water, we didn't have water for like less than 24 hours, and then we, the rest of the the period of not having electricity and all that stuff um we did have water so we were lucky but some people did not have water as well as electricity because we didn't have electricity as well obviously when you went out when you go like to the street actually like let's say i want to go to the pay whatever i don't know go to the grocery store or something the trees and the light posts that were falling and all this like the 
it was insane. And I'm, I didn't film any of it. Damn it. <laughs> I didn't film any of it, but it was just like, it's a, it's a process. So I was kind of shocked about it. But, you know, there was a lot of damage. Just damage. You, you didn't expect to see it, but it was there. So two weeks later, some cell phone companies have Signal, which the first one was Claro, which is a brand here in Puerto Rico, and I believe, I think Claro was the only one working, and later that, um, T-Mobile, like, caught on the board and was working too, you can, you, you were using Claro's, um, Signal, I guess, but you can use your, your phone, your T-Mobile phone, if you were T-Mobile and AT&T, I believe, got on board on that too, still wasn't working properly, but, you know, you can get a, a message in or two, or, a phone call in for like a few seconds or whatever so that was rough not knowing how to explain to your family that's somewhere not in Puerto Rico like that you're fine and nothing happened because the news honestly the news like example my cousin lives in my cousins that have family in Pennsylvania Mississippi in in Massachusetts etc etc New York um the news that they show over there is this total destruction, which I agree there was total destruction, but not all places were affected by that. You know, we did have a destruction, but when in the news there's just all this death and stuff, and you know, your family gets worried and you have to tell them you're okay. So that was hard communicating, but you know, we're all okay here. When things were like, I'm gonna say like a month in to the hurricane, there was literally nothing in the stores. Like, you can, I'm gonna insert a picture here, if you can see there's literally nothing because, you know, there's no shipment coming in, there's no merchandise coming in because, you know, it's, it's, just, and it's a status of crisis. So it was a bit insane. About batteries, we didn't have enough batteries. You're never gonna have enough batteries. First of all, because you don't, you don't, you can't buy a lot of batteries and expect them to be good when you use them because they, they like expire or whatever so that was bad we didn't have enough i guess light flashlights or whatever but you know we got through because our family and friends um thank you guys our family and friends um sent us you know when the mail correct me when the mail like started working because the mail was not working like you someone sent a package and it literally gets here like a month later like the mail was not working it was very bad and once it did start to work the lines to get the mail because everything was backed up was insane it's a place where you can go get food if you need it stuff and it's free obviously donations so we did that too Um, the lines were a bit insane as well, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. You get bored a lot after the cleaning and after everything is dealt with. FEMA comes and helps you, you talk to them, blah blah. After all that process, there's not much to do. Uh, regular house stuff. Oh, laundry. Laundry. Ooh, laundry by hand. So here we have like this big tub, metal tub, or whatever you wanna call it. I don't know what you call it in Spanish, but in English, I'm sorry. But so you do laundry there, you have detergent, and you, one by one, you're doing laundry, you have like this cleaning thingy that you scrub the clothes on. That's a bitch. <laughs> so I, I mean, I did it because I had to, but girl, mm, that was a struggle. But after you get used to it, like, it's like kind of fun because like, it's like a process. It's like a, a little relaxation moment there. So that was fun, I guess, sort of, kind of, you get used to it. I did have a social life, apparently. My friends, like, they came over a lot. Well, not a lot, but more than they do, you know, regularly. And we went out a lot, like, to play cards, to play, I don't even know, dominoes, board games. Um, one of our friends, his family has like I don't even know what's called it's called a planta in Spanish I don't know what it's called in English but you know it's a, it's a machine that gives you electricity with fuel gas so when I went there for the first time they had cold water girl it was it was beautiful it was a moment because you you don't have cold water because you know you buy ice but ice melts real quick so you know that was a nice moment um, but we had a lot of fun playing board games just bonding and talking and my friend's father passed away not technically not because of the hurricane but it was during these moments so that was very sad for all of us may he rest in peace um but you know we were there for her and 
she's okay now, thankfully, and um, so that's, there's that school. There was no school for a while. Some school started like a month, just bam, bam, bam. Um, they maybe without light, maybe without water. I mean, usually without light, they'll start it. But if you don't have water, like there's no lunch and stuff. So there was that. So some schools started a month, and you know, slowly but surely, more schools started opening. My friends, they started not as quick. I believe like a month and a half in or two months, and they're still. It's January, and they're still finishing. I think right now they're finishing their like first semester. So you can imagine that it, you know, you know, slowed down a lot of graduations and it slowed down a lot of tests and all stuff. So there's that. And there were when they started, there was probably no electricity. So you know, in universities, everything is the internet. So that was a bit hard for them. I can't imagine. And you know, the point of saving up gas when the lines are like forever. I'm sure it wasn't fun. But yeah, slowly but surely, everyone started to go back to their normal routines. And then they started to put electricity. Now, my friends, they all got electricity, and I'm very glad for them that they did. I was the last one out of my friend group, I think, to get electricity, which is recently, literally like four days ago. So, your girl was not going to the house, which I should have, but I did went a few times to my friend Joe's house to steal internet. <laughs> Right. and you know just to see the light because you're just so accustomed that the sun sets at six and you're in darkness then you also learn to steal internet from people I'm sorry I'm not not necessarily steal because they're like free they're like unlocked they don't have passwords but you know you get to learn where the cool spots are what the fast internet is and all that stuff I read a lot during this past this past hurricane dingy majiggy I read a lot I'm just gonna I guess show the images of what I read, but I did reread some old some old stuff. I read, read I, re I read some new stuff, so I read a lot. I think I'd say about twenty books in these three months, twenty to twenty-two, something along those lines. I will count and I will put the number somewhere on screen. Ow! I just hit myself. I discovered and most some of these already have TV shows like Shadowhunters, so I'm watching that currently, really good. And Discovery of Witches, I believe, or they're making a TV show, so I'm excited for that as well. But I did read a lot. Out of all this negative, you know, moment in our lives, we, you know, we learn to grow as people. We learn to live without internet and without electricity and just disconnect for a bit. Even though it was a, a wrong time to do so because the world was such a mess. But you know, you learn to live like peacefully and you learn to rebuild um, friendships and rebuild family bonds and it was actually out of everything bad that happened it, you know good stuff happened too and I'm so sorry for everyone who lost um, their homes or family friends or all that stuff that I'm sure that's awful but um, it's a moment to grow and to be strong and hopefully be prepared for the next one if there is a next one Hopefully not, because that was awful, but you know, you're never fully prepared, but hopefully you'll be more prepared than you were last time. Hope I didn't miss anything, I think. I don't know. Coach Hours was a bitch, too. <laughs> if I miss anything, I'll either insert it in the video or I'll put it in the description box. Whatever I want to say. But yeah, this is me, I guess, making a comeback to the YouTube world I guess hi <laughs> yeah so thank you guys for listening to my guest story time or my what happened or I don't know what I'm gonna call it but I hope you guys enjoyed you know me talking a little bit about Hurricane Maria and what it was like so I hope you guys um you know subscribe give a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or you know thought it was interesting if you have any comments you know questions please comment them down below if you were here during Hurricane Maria let me know what your thoughts are on it how did how it was for you it was a bad time for all of us but out of all the bad times we can learn something good from it so thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys very very soon bye subscribe for my inconsistency